Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Miss Lisa, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about everything I want to, science and math related. And what we're talking about today is how to use your graphing calculator to get imaginary solutions to quadratic equations and the discriminant. Now, what do I mean by all of that? If you are doing Algebra 1, this is in your book on page 540 and 541. Now, you don't have to be doing Algebra 1 to learn this idea. So let's, first of all, talk about the quadratic equation. This is the quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, way back in the 80s, we, did, we sadly did not have these graphing calculators. We didn't get these till the 90s. But in the 80s, all we had was good old TI-25 scientific. And it would not solve quadratic equations for them, us and graph it. So we had to do this. We, had, we could use our calculator, but we had to plug everything in to this equation to be able to get the answer. And it was a big old pain, and I'm slightly dyslexic. It was real easy for me to make a little mistake and mess it up. But one of the things we would do is we would look at this part of the equation, which is called the discriminant. It has a special name. And before you solve the whole thing, you would solve the discriminant because if it's a negative number, then it means that there were no real solutions because you can't take the square root of a negative number and you could write no solutions and go on to the next problem. So it was great. I loved it when there was a negative number there. No solutions, you got to quit. Well, nowadays, it's all different. One is that we don't care so much about the discriminant it in Algebra 1. Later in Algebra 2, it's going to be more important. But in Algebra 1, we don't do that anymore because now um, we use our calculators and also now we are more likely to go ahead and find out the imaginary answers, which I always think of SpongeBob going, imagination. So that's what discriminant is. Now, so this is, it says investigating the discriminant. So this is a little exercise. And what you found out, I don't want to spoil the ending for you. Spoiler alert, but I've already told you it's that if the discriminant is a negative number, you end up having no solutions, no real solutions. If our parabola is sitting on top of the line or hanging underneath the line, it has one solution. That happens when the discriminant is zero. If the discriminant is zero, you get only one solution. If the discriminant is a positive number, then you'll get two solutions, like here. See how our parabola crosses in two places? That means there's two solutions or two answers. So what you can you can do this exercise, but what I wanted to show you is that why the discriminant is why I like the discriminant now. For a while, I was like, ah, it's not important anymore. We don't really mess with it so much. But, but this is what I like about it now, is this program I have. See how it says program? I'm going to use program. And do you see the one I have down there, number six, Discrimi? If you don't have this program, you need to get it. This is a beautiful program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to do this problem and find out what our... Um, what our discriminant is. Okay, and we can do this one right here. We'll do that one. Um, that crazy sound you're hearing is my cat. She wants one to praise her for getting her mouse. All right, so we're going to ignore her. Program discriminant. Discrimi I hit enter, and it wants to know what is A. So in this equation, A is the coefficient of x squared. It's an imaginary one. Uh, uh, not imaginary. <laughs> it is an understood one. So there it is. I hit enter. Then it wants to know what B is. It is a negative three. So we use negative whenever you're putting it into this program. Negative three, enter. And then it wants to know what our C value is. The bare number is a negative four. All right, we got those in and we hit enter, and it tells us that the discriminant is 25. 25 is not negative, so that means they're not imaginary solutions. It is not zero, so it doesn't mean there's not one solution. It means there's two solutions. If we look where they did it in the book, they said it's positive, so it has two solutions. Now, with this program, do you see how it's going A? It wants us to tell what A, B, and C is again, 
and it will move from telling us what the discriminant is to what the answers are. And of course, we want the answers. Now, if you are not doing a problem that has a magic, and there are the answers, there are four and negative one, those are the solutions. Um, but, but if you're not doing a problem that could have imaginary solutions, you might not want to use a program like this because you have to enter everything twice. But let's try this one. This one is our C one. We're going to do this one, okay? So we're going to run this again. And usually if you just hit enter, it'll run again. Yep, it did. Okay, so our A is 2, B is negative 2, and C was 3. Okay, it tells us our discriminant is negative 20, and it says negative 20. There are no real solutions, but we're in Algebra 2, and we have to come up with the not real solutions, the imaginary ones. So I put it in again, 2, enter, negative 2, enter, uh, 3, enter, and it's going to tell me the solutions. It's going to scroll by really fast, but we're going to get our our imaginary solutions. One of them's right here, but this is my solutions. One, and it's actually plus or minus, and that's the thing that's missing up here is the plus. Imaginary times the square root of five over two. So that's my imaginary solution. I got it. That is so valuable to be able to get imaginary solutions. Now, this program that I just had was actually written for an 82 or an 83, and it runs better on them. It scrolls slower, so you can actually see that one. It runs too fast on an 84, but it works on an 84 because if you can see one solution, you know what the other one is because what creates two solutions is that that is plus or minus. So it's one solution if it's plus, and it's the other if it's minus. All right, so that is a beautiful thing. All right, so have fun investigating this. Like, share, subscribe. Math is great.